My Bolt 2023 has turned one year old. I got it on February 15th, 2023, and this is a little bit after the birthday, but I still wanted to have a little review and go over everything I've learned while driving this thing for a whole year. I drove it 27,000 miles in that year alone and averaged 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour which is amazing because I got it during winter and then drove it through two winters in that year and only one summer. So I was averaging on the lower end. I, during the summer, was hitting 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour overall average for the drive. And it's been amazing. I can't say enough how much I love this car and I hope uh, you old get a lot out of this video because I've learned a lot while driving it and hope I can shed some light on some things you might have questions on. So I always wanted to start a video like Marcus. <laughs> so I wanted to start at the front and just say this car it looks cool. I am a huge fan of the looks and I definitely like it more over the Bolt EV compared to the Bolt EUV way more and I think overall the regular headlights look cool and the day running ones and compared to the actual headlights they work great haven't had any problems with visibility driving at night or any other time low visibility or anything the headlights have been great brights and all that work fantastic um, Overall, the windshield wipers, simple, really like them. Uh, they have an option for automatic wiping, so, you know, they'll kick off as soon as it detects some rain. That's worked perfectly since using it, and um, it's something you can disable if you don't like it, but overall, it's been great. Uh, the package I got, if you can tell, is the red line package. So they got all these nice red badgings and everything. And if we come to the back, it is noted that the Bolt EUV sign is in red and it uh, looks really cool. I like the look. I personally was actually going to go with the blue version of this car, but that was going to take at least three to six more months to actually get it. This one was just showed up on the lot and wasn't ordered by any individual. So it was up for grabs and I was tired of waiting for the car at that point and ended up uh, picking it up. So next I'd like to say the doors are great because they have the built-in option to lock and unlock the vehicle at a push a uh, button so you don't have to mess with your keys if you don't want to you have the back doors which from my experience have been uh nice but something to consider is the fact that you have a really nice and wide back seat that will fit an adult very comfortably but you get a very big door because of that and it's something to note that we've always had to be very cautious with these when parking next to someone because they do stick out quite far with the design uh, overall I really can't complain because having the extra leg room in the back has been great when driving people around so that's been fantastic and then back here to the rear we have an excellent amount of back space a little tight compared to other hatchbacks but knowing that you're getting a nice deep floor which as you can see this is essentially how I would normally have it. I actually like to drop the floor lower um, and primarily we use this to
grocery shop and with that it's really nice and being lower you keep all the bags in a good position that they won't easily roll out when you open the door and fall and they stay nice and together and have less chance of problems overall now if I can close this real quick one thing I did note I would like to note is the rear the actual back glass is quite small compared to some others not terrible you could definitely use the mirror and I'll show you that in a little bit um, but I definitely prefer the back camera which is hidden up here has a little water jet to clean it off and then your actual backup camera is down below the Chevy badge and what's nice is they're both covered but this one will definitely get road dirt and everything um, a lot more easily compared to the top one which generally has great visibility even on like a snowy or dirty day overall and then you have the front cameras for lane assist and things like that um, up top along with another front facing camera that works really well for like parking you have the underside of these mirrors have cameras for park assist as well and giving you that 3d view which i love the 3d view i really use it constantly and uh yeah i would definitely recommend if you have the option up top you can see this one is the top package so it does have a sunroof uh we use it sometimes it's definitely been nice can't complain and uh not necessary <laughs> um if i had the option to lower the price for what i got and not get the sunroof package i would i would be fine uh down here we have of course ccs and uh <laughs> dc char fast charging i have yet to dc fast charge the most i've ever done is uh just ac charging uh level two at the most so in a whole year i've gotten around on twenty-seven thousand miles without having to fast charge because well honestly i have a uh, charger at my house in the garage easy to plug in and just charge overnight that has worked incredibly well so yeah i would definitely recommend getting a home charger if you have the option it's way cheaper and you're always good to go when you leave the house but at this point let's step inside all right so get a nice little chime when you're entering the vehicle I'm gonna put on my seatbelt because I'm turning on the car and I don't want it to keep dinging. So as you can see, I've had uh, tire warnings for the my left side, both left side tires. Annoyingly, that continues to happen. I recently made sure they're up to the spec amount and I think it's um, more often, this has been happening during the winter with the colder weather, but it keeps warning about it even though the tire pressure is correct so minor annoyance but it's nice that it has the warning option if you need it if you're concerned you will see that um, but sometimes it can be a little finicky and incorrect to say the least uh, let's see let's go around so front simple gauge cluster love it gotten used to it you get uh, easy readable estimated range on the left you have how much range you're or how much kilowatts you're either using or regening on the right and in the middle you'll have your miles per hour um, as you can see i have definitely driven this a little past the twenty-seven thousand miles this is about uh, a little over a month later <laughs> from february 15th so uh, of shooting this so you can still see I'm averaging the 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, but then you also have the lane assist and um, automatic driving up in this cluster. 
Then you have the middle screen, which I definitely like. Um, it's not perfect, but it's surprisingly close. I love most with, if you compare it to like a Tesla and stuff like that, the fact that there are simple and easy to reach and usable HVAC, uh, you know, and AC uh, controls down below, actual physical buttons for all that uh, real win there. Um, I would be very sad to be in a car where I couldn't easily toggle AC on and off. Um, there is an actual climate menu if needed. Um, if we turn it on, you can see there are all the controls here, um, which is a fine way to get more specific with what you're trying to set things at. But overall, you get all you really need down below. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy it. So above that, we have the mirror. What's nice is you have the option with a normal mirror or a video mirror. And what I was saying originally, as you could see, the visibility out the back is not the best. It's pretty small and, you know, you'll have to use the wiper if it's bad weather. I've driven in bad snow and fog and things like that, nighttime, and using the video mirror has been phenomenal. Um, I definitely recommend if you get a chance to get this, in, especially in a car that doesn't have the best visibility out the back, um, having a camera mirror, if possible, is amazing. Um, it just gives you a, a wider view than you would ever get out that out the back. Um, it's more clear in most scenarios and just nice. Um, I would say that my girlfriend prefers to use the regular mirror uh, because she says the video mirror makes her uh, dizzy um, and she doesn't like the the view. I think it works just fine personally, uh, but at least you have a very easy option to just flip the bottom bit um, to get the, uh, the view changed as needed. Um, and if it's in the video configuration and you need to check yourself in the mirror you still can there is a nice uh flip out mirror in the visor um and yes my thoughts on the visor have not really changed i still have about a two inch gap right next to me that is very often um allowing the sun to shine on my face uh this is too small and I wish it, at the very least, would extend just a little bit farther so it wasn't such a problem. And otherwise, I've gotten used to it, sure. Um, but just a minor thing that I would love if they changed in the long run. Um, past that, let's see. I do like the steering wheel. Uh, overall size, very comfortable. Uh, the materials have been great. I enjoy all the button layout has been easy to use, easy to remember, and I love having the one pedal driving options turned on. And again, that's another thing my girlfriend prefers to turn off. Uh, one pedal driving is a simple button to turn off and it allows the car to basically run uh, just like a a normal gas car that you would be able to coast with more easily. Um, but toggling it on or off is very simple. And uh, usually I just have to get in, flip the camera and hit the button for myself to drive. And she does the opposite for herself. Um, and simple settings for the individual who prefers to drive a certain way. Uh, but with one pedal driving, Having the next level toggle to, uh, or paddle, I should say, uh, to easily get a little more uh, regen whenever needed. Either you need the regen or you just uh, need to slow down a little faster. This 
is a great way to do it. And I find myself, if I drive a, a regular gas vehicle, I'm constantly reaching right here while driving to slow down. Um, I, always, I always have my foot on the brake regardless, but um, it's become ha such a habit that I'll reach and it won't be there in the gas car, but I'm just braking anyways. Uh, but this is a fantastic way to get more regen easily, slow down more precisely, uh, and do what you need uh, while driving. It uh, works fantastic. I, I definitely like having that variability, that uh, ability to do it on the fly and not just have one stagnant amount of regen. Uh, so that's been fantastic. Uh, the turn signals and, and other stocks uh, work fine. Uh, on the wiper, you have the option to push it in to wash the rear uh, camera. Um, that works okay. I uh, can't say it's perfect, but in a pinch, it will help visibility enough. Um, but it definitely, there's, it may wash it, but it doesn't have a way to dry it. And that becomes, uh, causes it to not look great for a little bit until it dries off on its own. And I guess uh, one thing to note, sadly, I've had some boo-boos while driving, um, and I don't know how well they'll come through on camera, uh, but there is uh, some cracks in the windshield, and uh, that is, yeah, uh, unfortunate to say the least, um, but it comes with driving cars, uh, just figure I'd show uh, the windshield's held up, um, and this package from the dealer we got has the um, ceramic coating on the very front, uh, which is held up really well, um, which I am very thankful for as well, because of clearly there are rocks where we drive and we need to be cautious. Um, I have not changed the windshield yet because I know <laughs> we're uh, just probably gonna get another uh, chip in it sooner than later. Um, and the visibility has been fine, but, uh, hopefully it doesn't spread on this most recent middle one. Um, yeah, we'll see, but past that, it's, uh, holding up well. And then let's look at the sunroof real quick. Automatic open and close works really well. It's a really nice day today, as you can see. Um, so it's a great day to open things up. Got an easy way to roll it open completely. Um, back passengers get a nice view. Front passengers get a nice easy view. Uh, yeah, I like it. But again, I don't need it if uh, if it didn't come with the car. But overall, it's been working great. Really no complaints of use or anything no leaks thankfully of course um and yeah it works really well really simple and yeah no other comments on that but um yeah uh the car does come with onstar built in if you um are worried about safety features and things like that i uh just have the basic package i believe so if we needed it you know in an emergency we would have it um and speaking of emergencies i would say this car has such amazing safety features i would be very surprised to get into a car accident on my own um only if someone ran into me uh because down here we have the traction control uh, sport mode which we never use and lane keep assist um, button now with these on and the ability uh, for this car to see forward it has three red blinking lights that'll come up right around here uh, warning you if you're getting too close to someone at too high of a speed um, it will keep you in a lane um, or, you know, it'll nudge you back if you're going over a, one of the sides of the white line or middle line. Um, and with the ability to auto follow a, a car in front of you, you can set the 
amount uh, that you're comfortable with. Um, and you can use that at any point uh, where it will keep the speed you want. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is the use of Super Cruise. I normally, I was going for the lowest trim, the LT model, which wouldn't have had this. This one does, the premium model. Um, I love it. Uh, I'm glad I did get this model in the end because for about 50 miles out of the 75 miles of my drive to work, I use it and I love it. It has lowered my overall stress from driving to work and tremendously. Uh, it does a great job keeping you in the lane without ping-ponging you around. At lower speeds, you ping-pong a little bit. Higher speeds, it's very straight and comfortable. It does ride a little bit to the right more than I'm comfortable with or how I normally would, but it's definitely still in the lane. So it's not bad. It's just what I'm used to driving. Um, it does a great job keeping an eye on you and making sure you're paying attention. So uh, it will definitely warn you if you're if you're not looking, uh, it has not had any problems with me wearing sunglasses, uh, which I do a lot. And um, it has uh, a great job during uh, traffic and slower speeds because it will keep that spacing comfortably. You still are paying attention, but you don't have that uh, constant having to slow down and speed up and slamming on your brakes because the person slowed down too quickly. It will comfortably keep the spacing. You're not getting that jarring effect um, unintentionally, of course, but like uh, it's a much more comfortable drive because of it. It has come in handy so much uh, for thousands of miles, uh, tens of thousands of miles easily. And I would definitely love it on a road trip uh, for sure. Um, I wish I could do it on normal roads if possible. Uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, off-roads, non-highway uh, that aren't mapped especially are not uh, available. And by me, there's about a stretch of uh, 20 miles till it uh, that had construction um, that seems to have wrapped up uh, within the last four, three or four months that it still hasn't mapped. Um, and I'm curious how long that'll take, but we'll see. Uh, it still is very useful for a majority of my drive, and I would not go back. <laughs> it's hard not having that. Um, having to drive uh, normally is not as fun. Um, so that's been a great addition that I wasn't expecting to have otherwise. Uh, so one thing I wanted to show off, the camera, um, the bird's eye view fantastic works really well when parking in a tight spot um one really nice thing i utilize the car for if i'm in reverse if i'm in reverse you'll see out the back but if i'm parked or if i go into drive while using the camera i and going slow enough it'll keep the camera on and i can park into like my garage uh more carefully and be able to see how close I am to things more easily with a nice top-down view as well. Uh, also, we can look at the energy and details. Now, I've really liked the ability to see the impacts, um, especially when it's cold out and you can see just how much the temperature might be affecting your battery and uh, range. Uh, it's nice to see it at a glance. I like the quick details uh, to see if your climate especially is eating up uh, the amount of battery uh, consumption more than you would like, um, which then brings me to in the climate control options, this car has heated seats as well as cooled seats in the front uh, and in the back it actually has uh, nice heated seats at the very least. Uh, you can see the kiddos would not benefit from that as much as an adult, but it is really nice to have. Um, 
the heated and cooled seats have been fantastic in colder and hotter days um, and a really simple way without having to blast the AC or heat um, unnecessarily to warm you up or cool you off. Um, and in the winter, the heated steering wheel has been a game changer. Um, I don't think I would ever go back to another car without a heated steering wheel. That has been fantastic, especially if I really got to run out quickly and the car hasn't warmed up um, as much as I'd like. It is a great way to get your hands set up to be able to use that steering wheel comfortably for your drive in colder weather. Uh, the push button start with the brake is perfectly fine. Um, it is nothing to write home about with uh, other cars having much more unique or simplified ways of starting nowadays where you just get in and go like in a Tesla. Um, push button, perfectly fine. Uh, not having to worry about taking the keys out of my pocket or anything has been a nice change from what I'm used to. And uh, yeah, no complaints overall. Uh, another thing to note, uh, the built-in Wi-Fi enabled Apple CarPlay and Android Auto have been fantastic. Um, not having to plug in and uh, to use those features is always nice. Um, they automatically connect, of course, via Bluetooth and work really well. Seamless, um, great for maps and everything and, you know, Pandora, Pandora if needed. Um, yeah, uh, great having the, both of those options and Wi-Fi in this 2023 model. I know I've heard the um, some of these options are going away in other models, later models, and just uh, different car manufacturers are just kind of going away from them entirely. And uh, it's a bit odd, so it's really nice to still have that option. Um, also, it's really nice to be able to have, uh, different users. Um, you can set, you have a guest user by default, and then you can have your own. Um, uh, me and my girlfriend have different ones. Uh, so that pertains to what's nice with when you get in the car and depending on what user you, you have set, it will remember what, uh, let's say what radio station you had, uh, what, um, uh, devices you've had connected, uh, what uh, what your favorite radio stations might be, um, and in what order. Uh, that'll all be set per user, and uh, it'll even remember what volume you had the it at the last time if you switch between users. Um, so very pretty straightforward, but nice overall to have that between each other, because um, I know she has different taste in music so her stations are a little bit different than mine and having that familiarity with uh, which ones in which order when searching for a song uh, or a station uh, is nice when you can save it to yourself the overall audio quality is fantastic that is because of the sun and sound package in this um, that is likely better than a normal model i would say but um, that part was worth it. I do enjoy the sound, uh, quite a bit. That's been fantastic. No complaints. Um, uh, it's not earth shattering or anything, but it definitely, um, uh, works well. Sounds clear, uh, has good range, uh, lows to highs and everything. And, um, yeah, haven't had any complaints. One thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the lack of charging ports there is a usb a and usb c which work fine um but it is hard to plug those in without having to look down in there uh what is nice is it does come with a wireless charging pad down here and that does work well but as you can see in this little nook it has an easy ability to overheat the phone and have poor performance charging most days, totally fine. Hotter days, definitely a problem and something to be aware of because of the design of this. Um, it is kind of annoying to come across uh, having it charging and then stopping because it's getting too hot and not realizing because it's tucked away. Um, and overall, it's 
kind of usable in other ways. This little area, if you needed to throw something in there real quick, it's not a big deal. Um, but I wish there were more accessible uh, charging ports uh, just in case so you could use a cable if you prefer not to charge with a wireless charger or maybe your phone doesn't have it. Um, and it's underutilized with the center console. Uh, definitely not something um, installed here. No ports, no additional ports, um, unfortunately. Well, and there's the 12 volt option as well, so technically three, um, but none other than that. Uh, compared to a lot of other cars that have a lot more, that is a downside um, for sure. Uh, in the center console, I would like to note, uh, other than the one total driving, switching, in the center console, I've really grown to like the overall simple gear changing. Um, the switch into drive, reverse, and park has been um, fantastic, actually. It leaves this area nice and um, open, so there's no uh, shifter in the way. Uh, you don't have to worry about being up on the stock or anything or not in the screen. Simple, easy to reach, and feel for the swap and you're only really swapping between these two normally and then park and it's really hard to get that because you don't push the reverse you don't push the drive you pull and then you push the park i like it i think it works fantastic um having any problems with that uh i prefer it i've gotten really used to it and i definitely like it overall and would recommend um others to do similar stuff um but you just never know i think that might change uh, as time goes on. Tesla is definitely getting a lot of vehicles sold and just having that center console be everything all in one, no more shifters and things like that has become more normal, unfortunately. So we'll see what the future brings. Uh, I like physical buttons. I like the climate controls being where they're at. I like having buttons for them. I like the shifting options being buttons. And uh, it would be sad to get rid of them. So we'll see what the future brings. Uh, we'll see what maybe an update to this vehicle brings. Um, overall, I really like the way it is right now. So hopefully not too many, just minor things like a heat pump and, and stuff like that. But, you know, we'll see. And as you can see, the car's been on this whole time and it is silent, which I really enjoy about electric vehicles. Uh, that part's pretty obvious, but overall ride within the cabin is fantastic i am always impressed driving down regular roads and highway and everything just how quiet it is compared to our gas vehicle um this is a very comfortable ride overall um it handles you know bumps really well it's very comfortable and very quiet i definitely enjoy driving this car over our other car which would be ford escape um it is much more comfortable now comfort might end in the ride um because the seats they are really nice in the fact that they are heated and ventilated and everything and they are an improvement from past models from my understanding especially the bolt ev but they still, compared to our Ford Escape, are not not very comfortable. Um, longer drives, you will definitely notice the lack of comfort, uh, I would say. But daily driving, not too long, um, you'll be fine. It's supportive enough. And I feel they went more firm uh, than they may have needed to be. But I have hopes that over time that it'll last longer being more firm starting out. That is yet to tell. But, uh, you know, we'll see. I I don't hate them. I just find other <laughs> cars I've driven uh, more comfortable. They're, they're definitely a, a bit narrow. And the car overall is uh, pretty slim and um, pretty narrow, as you can see, by <laughs> just by how skinny the center console is um it's not bad but because of that they're they're a little snug um but personally i find them good enough 
just not great. So uh, others may find them more comfortable, but eh, I would be surprised. Um, the only real downside uh, I've had for the common um, use of the vehicle, the, the, the seats are, it could be better. Luckily, the, the back does have great leg space. The front has great leg space. Um, that has been fine. I do like that in this package, especially the, um, the driver's seat is fully electronic that you can easily adjust to your, your comfort zone. Um, it does have lumbar support and things like that, which does help. Uh, unfortunately, even with this higher package, uh, the passenger seat does not have electronics, which is unfortunate, not a deal breaker. So I'm never in that seat or rarely. Um, but even so it, it's adequate. It works. Um, it's fine. Easy enough to adjust manually. Something worth noting, the overall range estimate is 247 miles, um, on the EPA scale that I think, um, it gets that, uh, on a, definitely on a good day. It, has been fantastic in the summer and surprisingly good in the winter. Um, in the summer, I was seeing the guesso meter over here um, starting the day out on a full charge, which I do charge to 100% on my level two charging at home. Um, but I've seen it as high as 290 um, around 300 sometimes, depending on how efficient the previous drive was and how good the temperature is for the batteries at that time. Um, it's, and it's gotten around that while driving it at those times. Um, and then in the winter, uh, which is kind of around now, it's a nicer day. It's about 50 degrees out, um, outside, but I started the day, it was showing, uh, 250 miles estimated estimated that has uh and i've been driving around a little bit it's at 237 now but um on average the lowest i've seen on a really cold day was closer to the 220 mark um but throughout uh winter it's been around the 230 to 240 range um and that's been fantastic so losing 10 to 20 miles from the EPA estimate on really cold days has been amazing. Now, I have found ways using the heated seats, heated steering wheel, and avoiding uh, using the heat, which that's one thing they need to add. But uh, using those, I have been able to lower the climate usage uh, and power draw um, on colder days to extend the range uh, significantly um, and still have comfortable ride um, overall with those features. Now that is definitely a downside. Um, the resistive heater in this car is not very efficient. Running the heat will drain the battery pretty significantly, especially in the cold. And the uh, addition or swap of a heat pump in this car, I think would go a long way. And I hope if they do continue to make this model, um, please Chevy continue making the bolt. Um, I think a heat pump would go a long way and hopefully it wouldn't be a difficult change for them to make. Um, and to keep it at a good cost for individuals to buy this car. I think it's worth mentioning. I also really enjoy the fact that this is an electric car, it does have good acceleration. Um, anytime I've needed to get on the highway quickly, pass someone, merge, uh, it's been really easy to do. This car, even though it only has 200 horsepower or a little over, it's surprisingly zippy and that instant acceleration is great, very comfortable. Um, and it's nice because it's not too much. There is absolutely no need for me to have 800 horsepower or 1,000 that some of these electric vehicles have. Having a single motor with 200 horsepower is plenty. I'm able to get up to speed quickly, 
do what I need and maneuver comfortably without it being too much. Especially with my girlfriend driving it, she has never had any problems with it being an overwhelming experience. It's comfortable, easy, and a, a nice jump, um, nice car to jump to from a gas vehicle instead of some that are a little too powerful for some that it might be uncomfortable and hard to control for some. Now, again, the safety features really help. And even though it is uh, pretty zippy, it has all that. So even if someone, this was too much for someone somehow, it, it still does have those safety features just in case. So overall, my experience with the car has been fantastic. I have saved a ton of money from gas, which I'll put up the stats above me or to the side, whatever. I'll, but I'll put up the stats so you can see how much I've saved compared to gas and uh, just how great it's been. I've driven it a lot, as you can tell, um, averaging, what, 1,500 miles a month? I'll have to do the math on that as well. Uh, but I've driven this car a lot and I have had a long time to get used to it and I would never go back if I had the option to gas for one but also just the bolt itself I think is a great package uh, for a great price the infotainment stuff seamless works really well snappy um, simple enough to use for everyone easy to read a um, lot of great features so one year of driving the Bolt EUV, I'd say has been fantastic. Easily a recommended car for anyone who's looking to go EV and trying to save some money. Um, even with the higher package, it was definitely more affordable than a lot of other options out there and has been a very great, reliable car. I haven't had any maintenance to worry about other than adding some washer fluid. Uh, past that, it's been a dream um if you're looking for any other questions on the car leave a comment uh, i'd love to know your thoughts and if you have one let me know what your what your drive is like i have definitely enjoyed it and would recommend for others so make sure you do your research and get the car that works best for you but i would definitely get a bolt again if i had the option so with that being said we'll see you with the next review and the next video make sure to like subscribe and thanks for watching the thunder mites later